There are a lot of Half-Life 2 mods out there. These range from ones that try to add to the story of Half-Life 2, like The Citizen, to others that use their own original settings, like Nightmare House 2. But most have one thing in common. You need to download them from a website. ModDB and Run, Shoot, Think, Live are two popular ones used by the community. But there are a few with their own Steam store page. These can help set the mod apart, as it's one click to install and play the mod. It also gives the mod more credibility, at least in theory. Steam and quality control have had a long history, but we all know of at least a few stinkers that have their own Steam pages. So having a Steam store page doesn't guarantee any level of quality. Oh, uh, you uh, fucked up my face. So today we'll be going through these Half-Life 2 mods, and we'll see which, if any, deserve their own Steam page. Since each one is free of charge, we'll also see which ones are worth your time. I guarantee you'll see a few surprise mods in this list, and some you've never heard of before. So before we start, just a few ground rules. We'll only go through mods in Steam's list of Half-Life 2 community mods. No standalone source games like Prospect. Also, we'll cover only single-player mods, no multiplayer mods. Some games in the list are also not released, so we'll obviously not cover those. At the end of each segment, I'll give a rating. One for whether it deserves a Steam page, and one for if the mod is worth your time. As you can see, this video will be a long one, so get comfortable. Grab a drink and snack, or you can use the timestamps in the description to jump around the video. Alright then, let's go! Snowdrop Escape takes place a few years before Half-Life 2's story. You play as a mercenary hired by a group trying to gather pre-war technology. This group is hostile to the Combine, but not allied with the Rebels, so you'll end up fighting both the Rebels and the Combine. The first thing that sticks out about the mod is the visuals. It's quite good looking and full of detail. Some comments online compare the atmosphere to Metro 2033 or Stalker, and it's an accurate comparison. The weapons also stick out. You have an entirely new arsenal of weapons, with iron sights and alternative fire modes in most guns. My issue with this mod is the ratio of puzzles and exploration to combat. Despite the amount of new weapons added, this is a very puzzle-heavy mod. The team that developed the mod really wanted to push the Source engine. That's evident from the visuals, but also the gameplay. There's a wide variety of puzzles with their own unique ways you have to interact with the world to complete them. For example, one puzzle involves slotting server racks in the correct order to power a machine while another has a code wheel which you have to manipulate to match the right code. Have you ever played a game and found a segment boring and frustrating and felt that the developer had more fun making the segment than you did playing it? Like when you play a slow walking scene in a big budget cinematic game. It feels dull to play, but it's actually the art team's cinematic ambitions realized. As someone who's dabbled in game development, I found even a simple feature can take hours of worth of coding to make it in a polished state. That's what I felt when I played this mod. The developers wanted to push the source engine and add new mechanics, and succeeded. But just because they could, does that make an enjoyable experience? Personally, I wish puzzles and combat were balanced closer to Half-Life 2's base game, but given the mod's high user rating, I may be in the minority on that. This mod definitely has enough quality work put in to deserve a Steam page. Would I recommend it? 
If you like Source Engine puzzles, I'd say it's a must-play. For everyone else, I'd say it's worth trying for yourself, just to see the environments and atmosphere. In Amalgam, you play as Gordon Freeman doing an operation for the Rebels. You are tasked with destroying a combined communication relay. You'll start your journey in City 17, eventually reaching the outskirts and destroying the relay in White Forest. I'll describe this mod as competent. The voice acting, level design, environments, they're all well put together. There's a decent amount of detail in each map. Each map has supplies to reward you for looking around. There's a few really fun combat encounters too, including one with a combine sniper. The whole experience feels like Half-Life 2 condensed in about two hours, with every key moment represented, from fighting headcrabs and combine in the city, exploring the outdoors, and ending in a combine citadel structure. But ultimately, nothing really sticks out too much about this mod. There's nothing incredibly frustrating about it, but nothing sticks out as a brilliant moment either. It does feel good enough to deserve its own page on Steam, if you want more Half-Life 2, then I'd say it's definitely worth playing. Ah, Logistique. This one leaves me with very mixed feelings. The premise for this mod is great. You play as a regular citizen named Ivanov. I live in City 17. Military checkpoints and propaganda posters are everywhere you go. We are rationed and domesticated like animals. The Citadel is the symbol of their technological supremacy. On June 7th, Combined Civil Protection Forces came to our apartment. They broke down the door and kidnapped my wife. They beat me to a bloody pulp and left me for dead. When I woke up in my devastated red this is not just a backstory, it changes the gameplay. You don't have a HEV suit, so you don't have a heads up display to show your health or ammo. You also can't use regular health packs you would use in the normal game. You need to find health kits used prior, prior to the 7 hour war. The biggest change is the gunplay, however. Unlike Gordon, who can run and gun easily, Ivanov's shooting is so tactical and slow. You need to use sights to aim, and the recoil is quite heavy. But bullets are punchy with satisfying headshots. Reloads are realistic too, with any bullets left in the magazine being lost on reload. Speaking of ammo, since you have no HUD, you check your ammo by holding down the R key. Ivanov will say out loud how much ammo he has, similar to games like Condemned, Criminal Origins, or Jurassic Park Trespasser. 
so it's an interesting contrast to Half-Life 2 in both story and gameplay. The visuals are good too, the environments feel like they belong in City 17 and have a good amount of background details. So we have good visuals, an interesting story, and novel gunplay. We must have a winner, right? Unfortunately, the answer is no. The Achilles heel of this mod is the level design. There are several moments where it's just not clear where you need to go or what you need to do, in contrast with how intuitive it is finding the main path in Half-Life 2. But the worst part is the platforming. For some reason, the team thought it would be good to add precision first-person platforming, and the result is just terrible. There's a whole chapter which is nothing but jumping and edging across thin ledges in this combine environment. It starts out tedious and slightly annoying, as you'll be virtually quicksaving between each jump. Then, they add low gravity zones and magnetic pull, which triggers every few seconds to add to the annoyance. Then man hacks and combined soldiers join the fun, shooting at you as you try to navigate. Also, keep in mind this mod limits your movement speed for its more tactical shooting so you don't have Gordon's fast sprint for all this platforming. It was an incredibly frustrating segment that forced me to no-clip my way through it, which I don't regret in the slightest. I don't know how this level got past playtesting in the state it was in. It's quite unfortunate because the mod never gets any good momentum. The good parts of the early levels are dragged down by the confusing moments in the level design. The platforming segment was just plain horrible and the Ravenholm-like section after that suffered from, from the same problems as the early game. Overall, it was quite a mixed experience with highs and some very low lows. It does feel original enough to justify its spot in the Steam store. Should you play it? If you don't mind a mixed bag, I'd say it's worth playing just to experience the combat. Just to save yourself a headache and no clip when you get to that combined platforming level. It does list itself as an Act 1, so if an Act 2 is in the works, I really hope the team ditches the platforming and improves the level design. If they did, this really could be a fantastic Half-Life 2 mod. This mod is really basic. Basic enemy encounters, really simple and basic environments which barely manage to hide the skybox void, Level design is very linear, especially the last few levels, which give you vehicles, only to make you go down an aggressively linear cor corridor. It's also very short, taking less than 30 minutes to beat, which by itself is not a problem, but combined with the above makes it feel even more basic. Also, for some reason the game showed no UI, so I couldn't see my health, ammo, or an aiming crosshair. I'm still not sure if this was a deliberate choice or a bug. My favourite part of this mod would have to be the splash screen before you reach the main menu. It's pretty amateur, but quite charming. Seeing that screen and playing the game, I can see this is an amateur mapper trying to do the best with their limited skills. So I can't really hate on the game too much, but it really does belong on a site like ModDB or Run Shoot Think Live. 
Does this mod belong on Steam? Absolutely not. Does this mod deserve your time? Not really. I do hope the developer got something out of having their own Steam page. I imagine that would be a nice thing to put on the resume. In Entropy Zero, you don't play as Gordon Freeman. You don't play as a member of the Resistance, or even a regular citizen. You play as the Combine, a Metro Cop the mod names Bad Cop. After a successful raid on a rebel outpost in the outskirts of City 17, Bad Cop is returning back to City 17 on train. When a rebel ambush derails the train when it is at City 10. The rest of the mod details Bad Cop's journey to escape from City 10, a city infested with a disease known as sea flu, headcrabs, and rebel outposts. This mod is very different from your typical Half-Life 2 mod, both in terms of story and gameplay. Playing as Bad Cop you'll end up killing the same rebels you work with in so many mods and the base game, as well as, as, well as Vortigaunts later on. Bad Cop is suitably misanthropic like the Metro Cops you encounter in the first chapter of the base game. He's got quite a few one-liners he'll deliver after killing enemies, all of which indicate he likes his job serving the tyrannical alien government. The gameplay changes more than the character models of the enemies that shoot at you. The gunplay has been changed to be more punchy. Bullets do more damage to both yourself and enemies, and recoil has been increased to match the power. You can deploy man hacks too. It's quite fun watching the hacks attack your enemies for once in the Half-Life game. The placement of enemies in combat encounters has changed too. You'll get to see the other side of all the ambushes you lay against the Combine. Rebels maintain defending positions, targeting you from hidden angles. Combined with the punchy gunplay, you really feel like you're fighting insurgents who use guerrilla warfare, as opposed to the more military Combine. The environments are also well done, covering snowy environments and combine architecture. There's also a fair amount of background detail and story to uncover in the environment, making up for the fairly light direct story in the mod. The raid at the start of the mod is a great vertical slice of everything great about this mod. It's all very unique and refreshing to play. A rare game where you get to play as the villain, and see the perspective of a soldier in an evil empire. It's definitely worth experiencing for yourself. Entropy 02 takes everything the first mod did and amps up even further. After the events of Entropy 01, Bad Cop has been promoted to an Combine Elite Soldier and is tasked to hunt down Judith Mossman. The visuals and sound are one obvious upgrade, the environments feel more detailed this time and have more variety compared to the first mod. There's a new soundtrack for this mod too, with some really great tracks.
Story plays a larger role in Entropy Zero. The game starts with a flashback of Bad Cop's time as a Metro Cop. We learn his backstory here. I like this change. It makes the previously flat one-liner spewing bad cop into a real character. And it does this while making him sympathetic, but also not stripping him of his villainy. After this flashback, we get a sequence where we see the aftermath of Gordon's rampage on Nova Prospect. It's a neat moment, but also introduces the first of many new features in the gameplay, squad mechanics. Since you're a Combine Elite, you can have a squad of soldiers. They're not too different from the Rebel Squad's squad and commands, but it's definitely cool commanding a squad of Combine. They do lack the humanity of the Rebel Squads being silent unless confirming what they're doing, but it creates a contrast between the bright Rebels and the mechanical Combine army. So, what's the deal with this place? Who left the bombs here? You guys don't sound very much, do you? After this sequence, the real game starts. You're given instructions from the Combine advisor at the end of the first game. You are to travel to the Arctic, capture Judith Mossman, and secure the Borealis. It's basically a continuation of episode 2, except instead of from Gordon's perspective, it's done opposing force style, with a Combine elite being the protagonist. You arrive at the drop zone, and this time, it's not just a skirmish against a few rebels in Cities 10. The Combine are bringing out the cavalry, and it's all-out war. The gameplay that follows here really makes you feel like a powerful soldier in an evil empire, cutting your way through ragtag rebels. You'll see all the tools Gordon Freeman dreaded. The hunter enemies, the armoured cars, the chopper, the synth gunship. Except this time, they're on your side. Holy shit! Oh, oh, jeez. These things. Okay, they're on my side. They're on my side. Copy. Perfect. Copy. 
transfer bay back. Move to the north. Report all perimeter intrusions. Over. Standing by. Captain, wait for my car on it. Lay down my vector. 3650 up. It's not going to be a complete breeze though. The rebels still have a few tricks and traps that can get the better of you, but it's only really stalling the inevitable. Like the feeling at the end of episode 2 when you hold off the combine offensive at White Forest. Despite your impressive kills, you feel like you're only really buying time for the scientists to launch the rocket and escape. That's what every rebel feels as bad cop approaches. It's only when you get cut off from the Combine Empire's might that you really feel threatened and overpowered. It's a great power trip that manages to retain its challenge. As far as the plot and gameplay goes, there are a lot more twists and turns to come, with a fantastic ending sequence and multiple endings. But I'd rather you play the mod and experience them yourself instead of explaining it all like I have for some of the other mods on this list. Obviously, I would highly recommend both of these mods. They definitely des deserve a place on Steam, alongside Half-Life 2 and its episodes. I've decided to group these two together, since I have pretty similar things to say about both. Both of these mods feature Gordon Freeman having to go through White Forest. Downfall starts with Gordon in the car, approaching a logging camp, while in year-long alarm, he's stuck in a warehouse and has to escape through a coal mine. Both of these mods feature similar scenarios to Half-Life 2 and Episode 2, from segments where you need to defeat zombies with the gravity gun and limited ammo, pushing through a combined sniper while darting from cover to cover. The environments don't offer anything new, but they use existing Half-Life 2 assets well, making it look just as good as those Half-Life 2 Episode 2 maps. The level design is very high quality. It's got that Valve standard where the whole experience feels seamless. It's always obvious where to go next with no objective marker required to guide you. They both feel like deleted scenes from Half-Life 2. These maps would not feel out of place in the retail release of that game. Not much else to really add apart from that, but don't hold it against these two mods. I would highly recommend playing these two. They definitely deserve their place on the Steam store.
This one is just plain bad. It attempts to continue the story after episode 2's cliffhanger, set in the Arctic with the objective being chasing after Aperture Science facilities. The first problem is it looks awful and runs terribly. The geometry of the levels is really flat and lacks detail. Other Half-Life 2 mods have done Arctic environments far better. The environments, while big, lack the detail you'd expect from even a basic Half-Life 2 mod. There's also this blur effect you can't turn off. Then comes the combat. On normal difficulty, an encounter with one Combine Soldier can drain most of your health. The only way this mod is even playable is dropping it to easy. The game also has a habit of crashing when you die. This mod clearly lacks polish and playtesting. Definitely does not belong on Steam and is definitely not worth your time. This mod has a problem immediately upon clicking New Game. At least for anyone who doesn't speak Russian. This long, unskippable cutscene continues on for a while, so you just have to sit through it or do something else. Or in my case, I get blown up because there's a running away sequence immediately after the cutscene ends. If you push through this, you'll actually get an impressive Half-Life 2 version of Portal. The visuals look good and polished and feel unique. The puzzles involve your typical puzzle mechanics. Buttons, force fields, placing objects in the right places, physics puzzles, spikes, closing walls, and powerful pushing and pulling winds. The puzzle designs are intuitive. As long as you look around, you can figure them out yourself. The mod does list itself in beta, and one of the features they intended to add was an English localization, which would allow non-Russian speakers to enjoy the story. But it has been some time since release, and development unfortunately seems to have stalled. It would be rather ethnocentric of me to say this mod doesn't deserve a place on Steam because it has no English localization. It is a decent puzzle game with a decent length, so it does have a place on Steam. If you like Portal or Half-Life puzzles, I'd say it's worth seeing through the Russian-only intro to play the mostly uninterrupted puzzles. Fast Detect Steam store page describes itself as an experimental graphic story that takes place in the post-apocalyptic Half-Life 2 universe that is shown from the artist's special point of view. It later adds, players usually rush along, forgetful of everything. Take a stop, come to your senses and look around. Experimental really is the name of the game for this one. Unlike a regular Half-Life 2 mod, Fast Detect features wide open maps. Some are just very large, but like a normal Half-Life 2 map with an ex exit you need to reach. Others feel similar to open world games like Fallout with buildings to explore and triggers to activate which open other parts of the map up. It actually does look quite good. The developer managed to pull off some nice looking visual tricks, and the large maps are full of impressive environmental detail. Some maps look quite scenic, while others feel more surreal. Overall, the environments all have good atmosphere.
The main problem I have with the mod is that it's incredibly confusing. The first map is the most open by far, and there's no guidance at all on where to go. It's easy to get into a situation where you'll end up losing a lot of health if you miss an important location, such as the building where the weapons are located. I suppose I am rushing along, and should be stopping and looking around. But this is still Half-Life, not Fallout. There's nothing to really collect and find when you explore, and with no indication of where the main path is, it just makes things frustrating when you explore somewhere only to find a dead end. In fact, I couldn't figure this level out. Only with the main menu and console commands was I able to see later levels. I feel like this mod would be a lot more enjoyable if they changed the gameplay. For example, adding RPG elements, or perhaps just ditching the combat and making it more puzzle slash horror focused. If you have a tolerance for a more experimental game, it may be worth playing to, just to see and feel some of the environments. Just don't feel obliged to play the game part of it. Does it deserve a Steam page? Probably not. If it was a competent game, I'd say it would, but it would fit better on a site like ModDB. Resistance Element uses the classic mod trope of Gordon Freeman helping out the Resistance, but it does offer a few new concepts to stick out. The mod starts out with G-Man transporting Gordon to an off-world Combine prison, which appears to be Zen after they conquered it in Half-Life 1. Gordon meets two imprisoned Resistance members who form a plan to use a teleport to get back to Earth. Of course, Gordon ends up doing most of the work executing the plan as he rampages through the prison. There's some good visuals. The Zen world vistas look good. Seeing the Combine architecture and Zen fuse together in one environment is fairly unique for the series. Combat and puzzles are well designed too. There's, there's variety and lots of enemies, but it never feels cheap or frustrating, and it's pretty seamless going through each environmental puzzle. After Gordon activates the teleporter, he's beamed back to Combine Controlled Earth. The objective now is to reach Black Mesa East and launch a rocket. The environments are also nice here. You see the city streets in an orange evening light. It looks moody and is unique to the series. Later on, you'll get to drive the Highway 17 buggy for a short driving sequence. I really enjoyed the atmosphere in this part, driving through this quiet rural town in the evening, stopping to clear headcrabs and combine infesting the buildings you need to pass. Overall, I enjoyed this mod. It has a nice length of around 2 hours and has some nice unique environments, solid combat encounters and puzzles. Definitely worthy of a Steam store page and a play if you're going through Half-Life 2 campaign mods.
Wilson Chronicles is a Half-Life 2 mod that takes you back to the Black Mesa research facility. You play as Major Darren Wilson, an employee at Black Mesa. You end up experiencing a, the Resonance Cascade incident and going through an experience similar to Gordon's. Warning, uh, emergency detonation detected. It's kind of impossible not to think about the legendary Black Mesa Half-Life 1 remake when playing this. This mod was released in Steam in 2016, and Black Mesa had its initial mod DB release in 2012, so this would have had to been produced after Black Mesa gained popularity. This mod feels like the version of Black Mesa a parallel universe got. It's competently put together. <laughs> But compared to Black Mesa, it feels shoddier. For example, you can see the same NPCs from Half-Life 2 recolored and copied as Black Mesa stuff. There's also a fair amount of sound assets taken from Half-Life 1 and 2, so it's quite jarring seeing a low quality Half-Life 1 sound right after a normal quality Half-Life 2 sound. <laughs> But it is worth noting this mod is a solo development and a passion project for the developer, which is evident from their responses on the Steam forum page and the fact that they continue updating it even after Black Mesa got their full release. If you are curious to see the Black Mesa the Parallel Universe got, I'd recommend it, but otherwise you wouldn't be missing out on too much. Does it deserve a Steam store page? Maybe when the mod is complete? Right now it feels more at home somewhere like ModDB. You don't need me to tell you Minerva is a great mod. The creator, Adam Foster, ended up getting hired by Valve. If that's not Valve's seal of approval, I don't know what is. I could leave it at that, but I suppose I should give some analysis of the mod. Minerva Metastasis is a mod about a rebel operative infiltrating a remote island the Combine have established a heavily guarded base on. You're guided by some kind of radio transmission, which displays as text on the top left of the screen. You don't appear to be a respected part of the resistance, the transmission is rather antagonistic, but I couldn't get much specifics on who, or the, who you are or the transmission are, mainly because it's easy to miss a message if you receive one in the middle of combat. Or you're, or you're just not able to read it before it fully disappears. This is the only aspect of the game I don't like, delivering the story through message prompts that disappear. At first appearance, the island is rather small. You can make a lap around it easily, and it's got a, it's got a few buildings and bunkers dating back to World War II. The only sign this island has anything interesting is a large spy in the middle, blasting a large blue beam into the sky. As you explore and try to reach the lower part of the spire, you'll find this plain looking island is a facade for a deep complex underground combine installation. Deeper below you'll encounter large labyrinthine chambers and strange combine structures. It's mysterious and fascinating to be around them. The environment design recreates the strange alien atmosphere we saw in the base game Citadel, with the new objects and places fitting into the Half-Life 2 universe convincingly.
This is just pure speculation, but the orange headcrab tanks remind me of the antline processing tubes in Half-Life Alex, and I notice similarities between old aperture science and the environments deeper in the complex. This mod also has great level design to match its environments. It captures the pacing and moments that made the base game so enjoyable. Each encounter is placed with enough gaps of quiet exploration, and enemies come from unexpected locations without feeling cheap. The puzzles are also intuitive, allowing you to figure them out within minutes to keep the experience seamless. It's easy to see why Valve decided to hire Foster after playing the mod. This mod demonstrates he understood the gameplay loop, environmental design, and universe of Half-Life 2 very well. This classic mod is definitely worth a play, and worthy of a Steam store page. From Earth is an interesting one. It has virtually nothing to do with Half-Life 2 aside from its use of the Source Engine. It has its own unique setting and unique gameplay that only has passing similarity to Half-Life 2. It also has virtually zero presence outside of the Steam page. Searching it on YouTube shows only one incomplete video walkthrough released five years ago. Not even bollocks cover this mod. In From Earth, you play as a woman named Zenaida. She is sent with her colleague Anthony to travel to a distant planet to explore and report their findings. Your pod crashes onto the planet and you get separated from Anthony. You have to explore and survive this strange planet. I like the atmosphere on the planet. It's got a familiar feel using forest and industrial environments, but it's got alien strangeness woven into it with all the off details like the glowing trees or the strange machinery. Still very far. Still some way to go. This mod also manages to be quite immersive. One way the game does this is by giving your character a full body. As you look down or into a mirror, or do an active movement, movement like jumping, you'll see your whole character's body moving. It's quite impressive seeing this pulled off in the Source engine, even if it does appear janky at times. Another nice touch is how you interact with your environments. You hover over NPCs and objects and make a selection and then you see your character's body move to make the action. Both of these features remind me of the ways you interact with game worlds in virtual reality, moving your hands in real life and seeing the same action happen simultaneously. It really made me want to explore this world in VR, rather than through mouse and keyboard. Eventually, you'll discover a race of peaceful aliens. These aliens don't speak English. They speak a made-up language which you have to learn to progress through the environments. It's similar to the premise of the film Arrival, if you recall. 
This is the real gameplay of From Earth. The game gives you a bunch of tools to help you learn the alien's language. It records the dialogue you overhear, splitting each word into a verb, subject, and so on. You can then type the equivalent English word in your translation dictionary, but the game will not correct you if you're wrong. So you have to be sure, or else suffer the consequences of a misunderstanding. You can interact with the aliens to help make sure you choose the right translation word. So you can do actions like pointing to yourself, objects, or presenting them an object. Hi, I'm Zineda. <laughs> As plus T. Oh, pato pato. Who are you? As plus T. What is this? Zipos Zazurutu. Zazu was supposed. It's all a pretty complex puzzle that I'm sure will be really fun and satisfying for the right niche of players. But I couldn't get far at all. I got the frustrating experience of trying to communicate with someone who doesn't understand English. We just stood around awkwardly, staring at each other as I made futile attempts to communicate. Can you open it? Can you give me that? Nonetheless, I feel compelled to try again. The language puzzle aspect of this game feels like something no other game has replicated. Understanding the aliens is actually not necessary to progress. The game does have weapons and a martial arts fighting system. If you choose, you can intimidate your way through the game, but I imagine this is a fast track to the bad ending of the game. If you're someone with an interest in language, or really like the movie Arrival, this may be a really special game for you. I would encourage you to try it. For everyone else, I would still kind of recommend this. It's such a unique experience, even if you can't make any progress. I know I'm going to keep playing this one, even after I finish up the script. So that's every single player Half-Life 2 mod I could find with its own Steam page. This video turned out to be much longer than I expected it to. So if you watched the whole thing, or just made it to the end, I'm very grateful for your time today. We played some good mods, some stinkers, some weird but interesting mods, and some absolutely amazing mods. I'm happy to say that most are good enough to deserve their place on Steam, and a fair few are worth your time. Mods and the modders that make them are awesome, and it's great that there's hours of solid free Half-Life 2-like experiences out there on Steam you can install and play with just the click of a button. With very few exceptions, the modders behind these mods all did a great job and I thank them for offering such quality experiences for free to the community. I'll have links to each mod's Steam page in the description with the credits, so be sure to check that out if any of these mods look like they're your cup of tea. I'm curious to see what your thoughts on these mods are. Are there any you feel I got the wrong impression on? If you decide to check them out, I'll also be interested in seeing what you think of them. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd love to see a like and your thoughts in the comments. There's definitely going to be more videos in the future, so please subscribe to see more videos. See you in another video. Until then, have a nice day.